All right. Looks like we're going to start this transmission of spirit right now. I just want to post the uh, links real quick in chat. Takes a few seconds. Uh, for some reason, I can't see the chat window yet. This is very strange. Okay. Um, you definitely got to have chat, so I don't know why this is happening, you guys. Let me find out. <laughs> Give me a second here. We're just getting this live ready. I hope it's all going to go okay. What's up? This is very strange. I, I don't see a chat window. We're going to have a chat window, so can someone please write in chat? Someone please write in chat, or if you can't write in chat, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Let me refresh my window. It was interesting because at the beginning I couldn't put it in. And now, let me see. I'm just refresh the window. There is chat. Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> okay, let, let me put in the the uh, donations link real quick. Much respect to all of you guys. Uh, f literally a few more seconds. Okay. Woo, 33 people. I claim that. <laughs> Machiwa. It usually doesn't happen like that. Can you guys hear me okay? Right? I'm getting sound on my end. All right. So, empaths and light workers. Light workers, that name. Light working. Workers. Working light. Connecting and uh, you would say sending out into the world light. You are choosing with your free will, light. <laughs> so this is a, f a choice that you make in your spiritual journey, in your spiritual awakening. And this is something that here on Crystal's avatar, um, we are learning this information from the Emerald Order teachings. Also, these teachings are called the Inner Crystals Law of One. And as originally taught by our teacher, Speaker One, she's called Speaker One, Yasha Ashana. And I welcome all of you to this conversation. Some of you are light workers or consider yourself someone serving light, yes. And we're gonna talk about what light is and what it isn't. We're gonna talk about you know some of the things that you can do to develop your own, you know, you would say energies, your intuition, your psychic abilities, because a light worker, you would say, is a little bit different than, you know, a 3D person, because they have activated chakras, parts of their consciousness, parts of their higher self. I want to say hello to everyone. Sunset dreams in the house is unconditional love. We have Sarah Holder, Thank you, sister. So happy to see you. Thank you for being a member. Oh, let me see. I guess I didn't go all the way to the beginning. That's weird. Yeah, this is weird. It's, it's not like... Anyways, we have a uh, Hunter brother. Welcome, brother. UTD, you, one of the first to always chat. Starseed's Awakening. You said a holy one. Some of you are awakening. Put it in the chat. Write it in comments if you're awakening. Uh, or you feel like you're going through some ascension symptoms, right? That's awakening. Frankie, I hope I said it right. Elliot, thank you for being here, Holy Ones, and your positive vibes. I am him. Greetings, family. Uh, DVGA, Bloomington, California, USA. Welcome, Callie. All right. Um, we have Robinette S. Hello from Michigan. Welcome, Michigan. Elixir Vision, what's up fam? Guy's daughter, hello, blessing beings. Let me see. Test, one, two, three. <laughs> okay. Okay, it looks like everyone says that it's okay. My Chiwa Celine sister, big hugs. Thank you for being here and serving with us.
Yes, you are, Hunter. If you have level one membership, you are supposed to have, yes. Um, it's just a matter of getting the link, and which is buried in my, if you have to go to my membership tab and look all the way down, maybe close to the bottom. Or you can have someone, if you're, hmm, without giving it in public, we're trying to you know keep that for members only. So one of us will let you know, either on Instagram, Facebook, or, you know, I, well, I gave you the instructions how to do it. Just go to my channel and go to the membership tab and find it in there. You will get the actual link. If you still have issues, send me a DM message, okay? Either on Facebook or YouTube or even put a comment in one of these videos. <laughs> Sandra, thank you for being here. Okay, we're chatting. Thank you for that confirmation, guys, daughter. Rag Access Muffin, greetings from Cali. Uh, you're in Cali, huh? Awesome. Much love, sister. Jen, thank you for being here, Holy One. Thank you so much for your feedback and positive vibes. I ask because I enjoy buying people's membership. Oh, okay. Yes, it will. It will give them access. Thank you for the question. And thank you for um, sponsoring some more memberships with, with our beloveds here. Okay, David, thank you for that confirmation. Wow, Hunter's already passing them out. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, at least I can get started. And uh, let me light my uh, candle. Uh, light workers. Okay. Wait. Mm. I had to close that window up. You work, you, you spend time in, in learning and training, okay? Developing your energy centers, your energy bodies, your aura, which is your higher consciousness. And we, we do that in our lifestyle. And one of the things that we do is right here, right now, what, we're, what I'm doing is cleansing your, your, your energies, your body, your space. And we specifically use incense resin. That's one of the things we do out of several things. One of them is using incense resin. And I want to say, maybe you have a indoors, you know, most houses obviously have fire, fire alarms. Well, this produces enough smoke to set that off. I know from personal experience. So you either have to temporarily just kind of shut those off or or uh, there's an alternative is to use essential oils in those uh, in in like one of those candle lights, candle hold candle. They they heat up. It's like a little thing where you put a tea light candle underneath and it heats it up up here, so you can put the resin the drops drops of. Um, there's also something called a a diffuser that will diffuse essential oils in the air. And you would choose specific essential oils that are known for cleansing and protecting. And so as a light worker, it's part of our life, lifestyle. Um, here's a, a term I like to use is spiritual hygiene, spiritual hygiene, energetic hygiene, where we're mindful, okay? And aware of throughout our day, throughout our week, throughout our journey of, hey, I, I need to cleanse. Or maybe you feel like you have some crap energy, like you feel down or sad or it's, you feel something's off. Well, there you go. There's a sign right there, right then and there to go into spiritual hygiene, to cleanse yourself, to protect yourself and uh, put intention there. The most, the first thing you always do, you guys, as a light worker, you're continuously putting intention in things that you do. Okay. And even putting your hands you're, you, you realize your chakras are here, but you also have hand chakra, palm, palm chakra and fingertip chakra. You can literally feel like, for example, a crystal, uh, let me, here's my quartz. You can feel the energy on a crystal. Maybe it's a light buzzing, a, a light energy, a light electrical, you know, like um, a current. Okay. Like right now I can feel this. Especially when you go into a still space. As a light worker, we're used to meditating. We're used to uh, being in self-control of 55. 
There's 55 people online. I claim that number. Someone put that in chat. Um, you know, you use intention regularly, you guys, and you're mindful. That's called mindfulness. When you're in a state of becoming aware of your body, of your energies, of your what you feel, and you and any time you can sit in stillness. And notice where you feel energy. Okay. Um, this is something that you practice and you get better at it and you, you notice things. You can start to notice subtle energy. There's techniques to develop your subtle energy in the Emerald Order teachings, in Kathara, in some of the different workshops of, of Ashyana and the Guardians. You will learn how to, you would say, affect, manipulate in a good way, affect your energies, change them, take self-control over your energies, develop them into a, a greater, you would say, flow, excuse me, I rub my eye, kind of like uh, you feel a little tiny bit of energy versus feeling a lot of energy. Now, there was one time, you guys, it was freaking unbelievable. It was when I was on, you know, you know how you put mushrooms on your salad? Mushroom. Okay. One time I touched a crystal when I was in that medicine. And it was so strong, it frightened me. I put it down. It was too strong. It was crazy strong. Wow, that's that's only happened one time in my life so far. And so, I mean, there's other times I've felt such profound energies going through my body that in a normal 3D, there's I, I've never felt that, not even close. But on medicine, it takes your natural abilities and boosts them. Now, we, we talk about cannabis boosting. Well, this mushroom is much more profound, like magnitude of 10 or more so if you're serious about exploring consciousness i recommend that because maybe you're just stuck in normal energies normal sensations and feelings well there's nothing wrong with exploring plant medicines that are natural that will assist you why do you think well they have the exact properties to help you perceive better Okay, the creator created that. Just like the creator created the, the vegetable, like a potato. God created um, earth, earth created that, and you are now taking it in. So this is a choice. You don't have to do that, but this is what I chose in my life. And I am truly grateful for that. I'm grateful for that because I would have never in my 3D state, my 3D life, I wouldn't have experienced that. Okay? So, people can say what they want. They can disagree with that. That's your choice. In my, as your brother Anuhazi, I recommend that you explore consciousness. Something natural, not a hardcore, you know, I don't even like to use those hashtags on my live, you know, drug. Uh, you, you simply are going to go towards what was grown out of the earth. No one put it there, but the earth put it there. No human, I mean. It wasn't something made in a laboratory. So, anyways, um, what a light worker does is, you would say, evolve their intuition, evolve their psychic abilities. They are evolving and perceiving the other worlds, other beings, other energies. Maybe you're someone who's good at lucid dreaming. Maybe you're someone who's good at reading people's emotions, like an empath. That's why we usually put empaths along with the light workers and psychic abilities, because you, mo not all humans ha can feel people's emotions. Now, I felt that before myself several times, and I I, I thought at first I was reading their minds, like, but I I wasn't hearing words, but I was understanding their feeling towards me. And at the time, I was surrounded by several people, not all of them liked me, so I could perceive that. I felt it. It was overwhelming. 
And so, and that was once again, when I was with friends, we were all smoking and I, it, it, whoa, they're laughing and giggling and, and partying. Well, I was trying to as well, but I started feeling psychic perceptions, man, and it blew my mind. I mean, it, it was like supernatural. I felt like it was like supernatural or paranormal. Um, actually, it's not. And actually, quite frankly, all humans should be experiencing psychic abilities. Um, so, but it's demonized. By religion, it's demonized. You know, any type of psychic abilities is witchcraft or Luciferianism or Satanism, according to them. It's BS. It's a natural herb that has the exact properties of boosting your chakra. Okay? Created by Creator. Created by the beings who created Earth, which are the founder races, who created planets and created extraterrestrial races, including our race. So, um, yeah, you guys, so you can talk about your experiences. We have no problems with that. Hunter, Giannis, yes, those are Ascended Masters. Um, but I was also talking about the, uh, the, uh, well, the Anahazi word, 144. There's 144 views, man. Uh, I grabbed that number. There's something called a chat rate of 11. So I got 11 and 144 on my screen right now. <laughs> So someone put 144 in chat. I claim that. We claim that. Um, but yeah, there's the Brenoa, who are called in, not the Anahazi word, it would be the, uh, well, they're called the Meta Terrestrials. They're called Universal Trinity. They are called the uh, uh, Solar Rishi, Rishi beings. You know how you have angels, archangels, Avatars? Well, there's there's the race who created all of those, and that's the Brenoa. So before the Yanis, it's the Brenoa who created the planets and the extraterrestrial... I got something in my eye or something? The um, extraterrestrial races. Okay, they're, that's why they're called the primary founders races. Founder, as in the one who was first, the ones who were first, which was the Elohai, Elohim, the Seraphi, Seraphim, and the Val flame Braharama. These are the three flames. Okay? So think about that. Your original body is a flame. Uh, we talk about the three flames. And uh, you would say, you're coming from there, right? You're coming through from there first. We all came from the violet flame, blue flame, or gold flame. And you would have experience in all three flames, but the majority of your incarnations are coming out of one of the three, mostly, like the majority, and some in the other two. So you could call your, myself, it's kind of hard to say because I feel like I'm from, I feel a lot of my energies as a light worker, as an indigo child, coming from the blue flame and violet flame because uh, of my dreams, because of my spirit guides, they're indicators. Those are in your indicators, your dream work, uh, your what visits you in your dreams. Um, when I started having all these animals, spirits coming to my dreams, man, I started to pay attention. Like in my dream, oh, it's an animal, you know, pay attention. It has a, a part of your family of consciousness will appear to you. Some of your higher selves will appear to you as an eagle, as a pegasus, one of my main spirit. It is my number one's main spirit guide. And so that's why I know I'm connected to the violet flame because we know, or you should know from the Emerald Order teachings, the pegasus, the pegasi, is a race of beings, a, a liquid light being coming from uh, the 11th dimension. Originally, planet Avion is where the pegasus are. But that's also where the Anu Elohim are from. So, but anyways, uh, this is part of the focus of a light worker and, and, and light path. So, I mean, impasse. So I, I will be making a, a poll a little bit later when we get closer to 100 people. Um, I'm going to make a poll about light workers. And so there's 77 people there. <laughs> and so thank you guys for being here tonight. And if you ever have any questions, just 
you can ask amongst the group. We have a beautiful group of loving people, non-judgmenting people, because we're following these teachings of unity in Christ consciousness. We're not meant to judge. We welcome different beliefs. But I ask that we ask that you guys please be respectful in chat. And we have Indigo Wizard and Celine and Little Alien and Starman who will who are monitoring chat simply for those who are trying to create disharmony intentionally. So um, you can disagree, you guys. You can talk about Jesus if you want. Simply be respectful to our beliefs. Okay, so this is this whole platform, this this channel is about the the perspective that we agree upon the inner crystals law of one. And so thank you for guys for being here. <laughs> Indigo brother, good to see you, Holy One. Thank you, brother. Wow. You have a magenta star. So you've been here for you've been a supporting this work for six months thank you brother so much and it could be more because the next star comes at the 12 month mark and that's kind of like a rainbow color and so uh there's probably f around 10 people between youtube membership and patreon membership that are that have been around for that have been maybe it's less maybe it's closer to half that number maybe but Thank you guys for supporting this work. There's a lot of members here who come regularly um, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing for all of us. And you guys know that we are all helping each other. Okay? Just become like coming together in this community. Uh, you know, I, I don't mean the membership area. I just mean that in coming regularly in chat in the, these live videos is... This is our work, you guys. This is our group, our family that we came we we came to do work together, and so it's it's a great benefit to be around like minded, like minded Christos beings, and it empowers us. It we miss each other. We come keep coming back because look because of the energies that are that we maybe won't find in our Christian family or whatever family that is still stuck in polarity. I mean, we could still be stuck in polarity, but we're, we're working on that on ourselves. Most people don't even know, what are you talking about polarity? What is that? You know, right? So 555, average view duration. That's because we just started. It will grow, go bigger than that. But right now it's 555. Five, five. OMG, you guys. <laughs> Uh, you guys aren't surprised. You know what's up. Someone put that in there so we can all claim that. 555 five, five is the average view duration. And so, um, thank you guys for coming here and spending your Tuesday with us. And as we talk tonight about lightworkers and, and awakening to that higher consciousness. Because that's what it is. Is when you start to... Just the fact alone... That any of you are experiencing psychic perceptions of whatever, because there's many, many different kinds of psychic perceptions or intuition. Well, that's a sign that you're connecting to your higher consciousness. You wouldn't be experiencing extrasensory perceptions without that. Because that is your higher consciousness. Okay? And that's one thing I would like to say. Like, if you guys are members, the 33... Well, it's called the Emerald Order tier membership. I'm writing about this. And um, so this is where you start being mindful of, let, let's say you're feeling energy. Well, understand whatever it is. Maybe it's something you feel in one of your chakras or maybe it's something you feel in your body. Think of any energy anywhere as being alive, as being consciousness. As being part of you. See, as a light worker empath, we are developing ourselves to recognize everything we perceive and don't perceive. Everything out here in the hologram is alive. Everything within us is alive. It's the consciousness of God. And so think of some feeling or sensation as, as people. 
some type of people, some type of energy and consciousness that is part of the creation of the creator. When you start thinking that in those ways, you start appreciating those energies. You start loving those energies. And of course, we could all feel distorted energies that we want to transmute, we want to heal. As a light worker, you get good at transmuting and healing. <laughs> um, you get good at fixing. On your spiritual journey, you're going to get better and better at, at removing old patterns, old thoughts, old, you know, like how you talk, how you speak, how you treat others, how you think in your mind. Not an act, like a pretense, like you're trying to act good in front of other people. No, it should be a natural, flowing love. And if it isn't, if it's a pretense love, <laughs> well, that just means you have more work to do, Holy One. So, there's not, you're only limited, really, by your own, you would say, desire to evolve. I mean, this is called spiritual evolution. Okay? And when you evolve yourself spiritually, uh, you, we evolve our DNA template, which is our body, our biology will evolve. And you will be able to transmute diseases, cancers, sicknesses, distortions in our previous thoughts, our old self thoughts. Man, if I looked at my old self 20 years ago or whatever, I would say, I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't like that version of myself. I came a long way. And so have a lot of us. Okay, we used to feel horrible about ourselves or depressed, where maybe you were ever in depression sometime in your life. Well, we can look back and celebrate with joy that we've survived whatever that mess was, you know, darkness in our life, dark chapters in our life. Well, we came a long way on this spiritual journey to get to where we are today. And you're not even done. You'll become more blessed. You'll become more extrasensory, more intuition from your inner God spark, your inner Christ. Okay? That's what we talk about here. That's what is unity. When you recognize God is within, that's recognizing everything is God. Everything you see is God. Okay? Other systems like religion don't believe in that. They think that's blasphemy. You're not God. <laughs> right? So we find God within ourselves. We have confirmation. We literally are experiencing, like I said earlier, paranormal things supernatural things they demonize that maybe if you spoke the some of the stuff that you perceive to your religious family they will chastise you they will you know damn you out of the family or something or at least in negative uh you would say judgment your way okay um so you don't have to tell the whole world that you think you're god that you know that you're god it's not a belief it's not of faith. You don't need faith. You don't need belief. You experience a literal knowing. And with these, this intuition, these psychic perceptions, it be, you are witness when others are not perceiving and seeing and feeling. They're not witness. You are. We are. Because we're not, and we're not saying we're special or better. That's what they say. They call themselves chosen ones and believers. We don't. Uh, we're all God. There is no such thing as a chosen one in when we're all God. Some basic logic, homie. How can you call yourself better or chosen or elite uh, when we're all God? Because if we're all God, we're all parts and faces of God. Well, that face, that part is not better than this face or part of God. It's on the same level. We're all, that's what whole, unity is about. That is the message of unity. That we're all equal because we're all the same being. It is God itself because God is an it, not a boy or a girl. It's outside of gender, outside of bodies. There, there is no gender in the consciousness outside of matter form. God is, we're in the image of that. We're in the image of God as consciousness. Not as a boy, not as a goddess girl. We have divine masculine, divine feminine, but realize you grow outside of gender. You're just divine whatever state you're in. 
just realize that all people, thank you for those hearts, holy ones, all, all of us are at different stages of that awareness. Okay? It is uh, distortions on earth that make us forget sometimes. You know, we don't, we're not connected to that direct awareness and memory. Because when you fall, 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 well, your memory is becoming less and less and less. It doesn't mean you're damned. It doesn't mean you're going to keep on falling if you stop it and go the other way. Go on a spiritual journey. Learn about your psychic abilities. Go into stillness and meditation. Do some yoga. You know, get those distortions out of your energies that you feel in yoga positions or whatever. Uh, you will go on a spiritual diet. I myself still struggle with that. I've seen my Christed avatar, but I still struggle with eating sometimes. But you know, we are doing our, we are striving to be our best. And we will overcome that which is kicking our ass sometimes. Okay, eventually you will transmute all of that which is not serving you. No longer serving your Christos path. Because if you're studying the Emerald Order teachings, that's the path we follow. We seek uh, not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chakras. No, we seek Christ consciousness, which is what? 12. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We seek Christ consciousness. We don't limit ourselves to seven chakras. We're, we're bringing in 12 chakras. And the, the 12th chakra is pure white. Okay? So, as a light worker, intuition, someone experiencing psychic abilities, you should be aware of your chakra. Let's review them real quick. Near, near, your root chakra, your butt, <laughs> um, your groin chakra, the sacral, the, the solar plexus, the third one is the yellow ray, green ray, fourth, blue ray, fifth, sixth is indigo, not purple, not blue, it's indigo. This is blue, 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 not some other kind of blue. Okay, because if you look on the New Age in Hinduism, Buddhism, they're showing the blue chakra as not blue. They make it turquoise. It's not turquoise. Or some aqua color blue. No. Blue, blue. Blue, blue. See, there's a couple colors of blue on this shirt. That's not blue chakra. That's what you're going to see in New Age. Go check right now on Google seven chakras. Uh, most of them are showing a different color blue. Blue, blue, okay? Indigo, not purple, indigo. Violet, gold, silver. I do this because it's diagonal. Through, it goes through the third eye. Third eye goes horizontal. Silver one, the ninth one, goes crosses past it like a unicorn. Think of it coming out of your head like a unicorn. So that's the silver chakra, gold, silver, above your head, six inches, dark blue, not aqua, not dark, not blue, it's dark blue. And then a foot and a half above your head, that's pretty high, right? That is dark silver. Can you imagine silver, but make it a dark silver? Or imagine gray, but a dark gray, dark silver, dark gray. And then finally, remember the twelfth one is below your feet, six inches below your feet, pure white. You can see spheres, or you can see Merkaba stars, six-pointed Merkaba stars, no five-pointers. Uh, that's satanic. Take Look at the, you don't believe me? Look at it. Look at a six-pointed star, turn, no, I meant to say five-pointed star, turn it upside down. It's a Baphomet's head. Look at the eight-pointed star. It's not what you want. You want a six-pointed star. Also notice it's the only one out of those that's divisible by three. 99 souls online. So we will do a... I claim that 99. I am born on September 9. 99, baby. What's up? And so now I'll do my poll. Um, are you a light worker? So you would say yes to I'm a light worker if you're feeling extrasensory perceptions. 3D people, they're called 3D because they don't have 4D or 5D or 6D, okay? 3D people aren't seeing spirits, aren't seeing other worlds, aren't lucid dreaming, aren't astral traveling. It's the starseeds, the indigo children coming in, the lightworkers, the empaths, 
who are perceiving higher sense. That means you're coming from other worlds. You're coming from the fourth dimension, heart chakra. You're coming from the fifth dimension, throat chakra. You're coming from the sixth dimension, the third eye chakra. The 3Ds are not. They're experiencing one, two, and three. They have 3D thinking, 3D conversations, 3D relationships, okay? 3D ideas and beliefs. But that's why they want proof. They, they want you to prove to them God. They want you to prove to them psychic abilities exist. I get so many times people saying, prove it. Prove, you know, in one of my video comments. It is not our job to prove to you, okay? What we perceive, you do not perceive because you haven't gone on a spiritual journey. You're not interested in chakra or didn't even know how to know what that is. What is a chakra? Exactly, right? So to you, it's a belief. You believe in the Holy Spirit. You believe in God. Will you change from a belief to a knowing, to a testimony, to a witness? Because you've opened vision. The three clairs, clear audience, clear voyance, clear sentience, seeing, knowing, hearing. Uh, intuition is having a feeling of a knowing. Um, empathy is feeling any person's emotions. Like I mentioned earlier, I felt a few times in my life. I've had clairaudience in my life. I've had clairsentience. I've had clairvoyance. Uh, we're not bragging, you guys. It's not coming from a space of bragging or arrogance. This is simply reporting, hey, starseeds, you can report in chat. If you've experienced clairvoyance, clairsentience, clair... Hey, let's look at the... Just as we're together here, I was going to make that poll. I will go off on a tangent and forget to the poll. So if you're experiencing psychic abilities, you can say, yes, I am a light worker. And you can also say you're a light worker if you're aligning yourself to love and light. You're not interested in... Well, maybe some of you are interested in the occult. Um, well, that is kind of dark principles. They're looking for God or power or energy outside themselves. These teachings are about inside yourself, called the inner God, the inner Christ. And you guys, I'm not making this up. This is our teachings coming from the Emerald Order. Uh, all of these people, most of these people on this live have downloaded Voyagers 1 and 2. Voyagers 1 and 2 are the first books that were created by the Emerald Order. Um, you would say translated by the Speaker 1. And so, I'm going to make that poll real quick. And you guys, uh, no one will see your answer. Don't worry about that. It's just, you know, we'll see the results though. Are you a light worker? A quick, simple question. And maybe we'll do a couple of polls. Um, start. Oh, there's one called... Are, are you a, a, and you guys can write your answers also in chat, please. We get more, more, uh, participation that way. Yes, no, or I'm not sure yet. I'll put a third option that says, I am not sure yet. <laughs> and that's okay. Remember, this is coming from a space of love, you guys. I'm going to see the results as they develop. 80% say yes. 90% say yes. 87. So most of you, it keeps going up and down until it, it goes like this. Until it finds the uh, equilibrium. <laughs> and once again, you guys... We're not bragging. We're in unity. We're trying to find unity in Christ consciousness. We're simply reporting and celebrating with each other. We're celebrating, you know, we're, we're different star seeds coming from other planets and worlds and cultures. Okay, I've spoken to so many people. I have so many of you sending me messages about things that have happened in your life that are supernatural, paranormal. Um, and I see so much variety. You know, there was someone kind of like a, even a modern psychic, but I was thinking of Edward Casey, 
right? Casey, what's his name, uh, full name? Is it Edgar Casey? Yeah, Edgar Casey used to do readings and he found so many different people or there's different psychics who can do readings, excuse me, feel people's lifetimes or, you know, some type of uh, hypnosis or regression, life regression, and you will get reports. Oh, this person's from the Pleiades, or maybe you're from Lyra, or you're a Syrian, you know, Sirius, Sirius, whatever you pronounce it. Um, and also, maybe you're from Orion. There's many different people, star seeds. No, indigo children are always going to be coming from Lyra. Okay? So if you think you're Pleiadian, then, well, that's also blue flame, but it's not Lyra. It's uh, indigo. Indigos specifically are coming from Sirius. Sirius. Um, Sirius A. No, B. Sirius A is the dark side, or there's some fallen angelic races there. So. Whatever you guys are, 83% of you so far say, yes, I'm a light worker. You're experiencing psychic perceptions. You are serving light. You chose. You choose with your free will. Now, if you don't like unity, you're not, you know, you think you, you want your service, a little bit of service to self, then you haven't quite made it yet. Okay, you're still serving yourself instead of service to others. That's what light workers do. Okay, service to self is me, 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 and I care about me only. Where is that love? Omni love, loving everything, considering everything, right? Serving everything, serving others. Light workers serve others, you guys. Others do not, they serve themselves. You'll find that a lot in Wicca. They're doing spells and, and and curses and all that shit for themselves, building power. They want power. Hey, building some type of power is not in itself negative or dark, but when usually it's the rulers seeking power over others to be better, to be greater than others, to be worshiped, to be praised. They're seeking approval, they're seeking you know, this is what, what are you doing? We're, we're not trying to live our lives for anyone else. Um, we're, we're simply coming together in unity. And some people who are in the dark side will think that's weak. Well, I'm going to gain power. I'm going to have, you know, whatever, control over whatever. Okay? So, and, and you know, there is benevolent magic. I'm not saying all magic is bad. What I'm saying is the selfish chaos magic. You know, there's, there is literally magic systems called chaos. Wow. Hmm. Right? We get so involved. Like, I do research. I watch uh, movies specifically for research. Like the Vikings. The, seas, the show called Vikings. They have all these pagan gods. Um, whatever. It doesn't. One, one, one. I uh, have the Sarah both I at the same time as Sarah I saw that with you. Thank you for for uh, sharing that. I claim that. <laughs> How many numbers, right? And we're only like 15 minutes in. It's crazy, right? Positive uh, excellent um thank you. <laughs> yes. But in the Vikings, man, they're I mean and, and they talk a lot about the Christian church because the Vikings are attacking England and all of the Wessex and all of the different territories before before this nation became England. Um, they were being they got these different principalities, they got different kings. And so they're they're talking about Christian on some parts of the show. And in other parts of the show it's all about these uh, Odin and Thor and uh, because that's what the Vikings believe in. Viking gods. Scandinavia, you know. So and then you see a huge it's not really even a difference. <laughs> there was a very important season. I mean, show, episode. It's in Vikings Season 2, episode, the episode called Sacrifice. And it is both pagan gods and both Christianity who are sacrificing...
And it was graphic. And the Viking side, people are choosing to be sacrificed. So the king cuts off every one of their heads or slits, slits their throat. And they collect the blood. It's about blood. Okay? Uh, Yehovah, Yahweh, demands sacrifice. They would kill the animals and collect the blood. Passover. Okay? They wiped the sacrificed animals and put blood on their houses. Uh, communion is about blood, drinking blood. You're not going to drink some literal blood, but it, it doesn't matter. It's symbolic. You're drinking blood. It's freaking... Watch the Vikings 2, the episode of, about sacrifice. It is a beautiful... It, it is a wonderful scene to, to just graphically show you that whatever religion is into sacrifice and blood ritual and ceremony and communion... Doesn't matter if it's Odin or Yahweh or hey, whatever God, all these Hindu gods cutting off human heads and drinking blood or even collecting heads around their, you know, like Kali or whatever. All these different gods, Buddha, you know, whatever gods, doesn't matter what gods. There's some dark shit in religion. And, uh, and you guys think I'm crazy or I'm making stuff up, but it's in history, buddy. And weren't the Christians in England uh, pagans before they became Christians? Okay, there's not much difference there. And you got them killing each other, murdering each other. It's about holy war. What the F, dude? Uh, have discernment. <laughs> and so, yes, I research shows like these dark shows because it, it becomes my content. Because I watched that recently, I'm going to make a video sh graphically showing it. I got to be careful not so it doesn't get kicked off of YouTube. Um, but uh, the show, I think it's PG. I, I'm not sure. So they're very careful not to actually show someone getting sacrificed, obviously. It, they will show scenes of them collecting the blood into a bowl. Kaimosu. <laughs> So, light workers were about light, not sacrifice. <laughs> light, unity, uh, bringing it together, baby. Uh, uh, everyone, everything, omni love. Not some, and not just uh, Odin's gods, and, and I mean, Viking gods, and, and Christian god, and, and Japanese gods, and Hindu gods, and, and uh, uh, all kinds of gods, man, who are into some dark, dark. Shit. And you know, uh, the church and the uh, kings and queens, they're into some dark shit. Look at some of the lives of these despicable beings. They kill, they will have incest, they will kill people for power, they will kill current kings to become the kings. I mean, that's what the, you watch the Viking show. It's showing you what happens in history, right? That's what they're always doing. They're always talking about going and inv invading and killing people. They go and kill all the Christians. They go into the church and take the candles, uh, the holders, everything that's price, you know, worth money. That's treasure. <laughs> and and they and then they're fighting amongst each other and murdering each other. And then there's this one scene where they're. Uh, it's called the Eagle. Well, there's different Viking shows, but in the Viking series, the original Viking series, the Blood Eagle, it's called. This is our, this is the heritage of Earth, man. This is what, th no, this is the record of Religion coming from fallen angels. And so we choose the inner Christ, the inner God, and we choose uh, Omni Love, and we choose to transmute the negative dark energies in our own hologram experience, in our own family, in our own relationships. We are transmuting that from our own thoughts 
uh, it's not about sin or guilt. It's about, hey, I don't want to be having these energies in my life. I am very serious. I'm very interested in awakening myself. I'm very interested in being pure. I'm not saying uh, worshiping a God. We're talking about, hey, I want to be have good thoughts, loving thoughts. Because we're surrounded by darkness. And we knew that before we came here. As starseeds, we knew, and that's why we're coming here. We're coming here because it is dark. To help raise the consciousness. The Guardians call this a rescue mission. Okay? Because there's three paths of humankind. Humanity is going to permanently divide into three timelines. Three paths. Hey, by the way, it's talked about in detail. There's a whole chapter in it in Voyagers 2. And our, our moderators, Selene, Indigo Wizard, Starman, and Little Alien, we will provide the links to, to, to download it to your device for free. Some of us are buying the actual books. I bought the books before they became, um, you know, where they weren't being published anymore, uh, printed anymore. So I got, I paid the regular price, but some of you have paid, you know, they found it in the past few years that it's ridiculous prices, but you don't have to do that. You guys get the free PDF. And they will show you the three different permanent timelines that humanity is going into. Okay? The least favorable, obviously, is the is the one that goes into phantom earth the the descending earth timeline you don't want to go there the next favorable one okay there's three you're going to go on one of these three paths of ascension or not ascension the second one would be the middle favorable one would be going to inner earth which is the having four and a half strands of DNA. Four, well, four, one, two, three, four, and a stub. That's four and a half, not a full, you know, full strand. Like you're, you're on your spiritual journey, you develop from, let's say you have three strands, you're trying to get four strands. Well, it would be like 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3 3.5. You see, one strand of DNA is built over 12 lifetimes. 12 incarnations build a strand of DNA. So you're gonna live as a boy, girl, that's two lifetimes, that's a substrand. You see, a strand of DNA has substrands, 12 substrands, 12 lifetimes. And you're gonna have six boys, six girls. You're gonna live as six boys and six girls. Male, female, male, female, male, female, male, female. Soulmate, soulmates, twin flames, soulmate, soulmate, twin flames. There's a difference. So you build the DNA every single lifetime. I mean, each one of those. So one of your lifetimes was a baby in Rome or, or Greece, ancient Egypt. Maybe you're in Maya, Aztec, Inca. Maybe you're in the cowboy days. Maybe you're in the days of Lincoln or in the United States creating itself, you know, for the in 1700s. Or maybe you're in the Atlantis, Lumeria, Mu, which is Lumeria was before Lumeria, a civilization before Lumeria. It's the Lumerians who went onto that continent. So you realize that... Uh, you're building all of these in every single lifetime. That's why you know that you were in the third. If you're on Earth right now, you know that you you built this. You lived in as a Lemurian. You had to, because Lemurian is during the second strand period of time. The Atlantean is around the third strand. Now we're moving into the fourth strand. We want to create our fourth strand, but it takes twelve lifetimes to create one strand of DNA. Okay, so who knows? Is this your last life? Because we know if the ascension, no, the time cycle of Earth, because this is about Earth, homies. So we look at her time cycle is 26,556 years. Well, out of this cycle, at the end of it is ascension. A chunk, a big chunk, because it's a few thousand years. 
Ascension is a, a period of time where every individual, not a global planetary thing, that's a new age distortion. Oh, we're all gonna descend. Bullshit. You have a few thousand years, all of you, since it was like a, a few years past BC, all the way up to 4,000 plus AD. There's thousands of years that people are ascending, can ascend, will ascend, are ascending. So you, brother, you, sister, are ascending on your own, I don't want to say the word merit, but your own DNA work, your own consciousness work, your own... Uh, why would everybody ascend who only has three strands? It is literally impossible. If you have only three strand 3D consciousness, you can't go into a 4D stargate. You see? You have to build 12 more lifetimes to get the fourth strand. You still can't go anywhere. Because there's three timelines and one of them is the descending earth. The second one is you need four and a half. But most people don't have four and a half. They only have two and a half or three and a half. They can't ascend. It's not about guilt or sin. It, you know, it's about how many strands of DNA, you know, uh, because we lost them. We got distorted in our DNA. These teachings teach you how to bioregenerate your DNA, your consciousness, how to bring in Christ consciousness and clean it, fix it all. Bring in what is Christ consciousness? That's your divine blueprint. That's the original you. And you're reclaiming it, bringing it back, bringing back your higher consciousness, light worker, bring in your fourth dimensional. That's what the fourth chakra is. It's connection to the fourth dimension, your lifetimes, your 144 lifetimes as in the fourth dimension. You get a whole bunch of new age BS or confusion or distortion about, oh, astral is bad. The lower astral is bad. Oh, there's some negative consciousness in the astral. It doesn't make the fourth dimension bad. You know? You have to live lives. Specifically, 144 lives in the astral to get your heart chakra. You actually need 12. But you have 12 souls, though. And 12 times 12 incarnates is 144 incarnates. We have 144 in our larger family, in the astral. You have a, in your larger family, in the archetype, which is the fifth dimension. Wait. The whole soul level. Let me correct myself. You don't live 144 lives in the astral. I, I, it's, it's, the, it's the whole second density. So that's a third of 144. Remember, it's all divisible by three in the divine. In the divine, it's about trin trinities. Not fives, not eights, trinities. So take 144, which is a nine, right? Take 144 divided by three. That's how many lives, let's do it. I think it's 30 something, I think. Like, I can't do that in my head, right? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> 48. You will live 48 times, lifetimes, in the astral to get your heart chakra. You will live 48 times in the archetype consciousness. You will live 144 times here in, in, in the third eye. But altogether, that's 144. So... And so we're on this journey. We're, 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 we're developing this as a light worker, as an empath. Because if you're not working light and you're working darkness instead, service to yourself, okay? Uh, and you got, you're following uh, false creeds, man, it is really bad for your spiritual ascension to be in religion. Really, really freaking bad. Or in New Age distortions. Because it's pulling you into phantom. You're, this is 
You can hear Ashana saying it many times, and it's in Voyagers too. This is no longer an ascension planet. This is a falling planet called Descending Earth. I'm not saying you can't ascend. What I'm saying is most of the consciousness is falling. That's why this is a rescue mission. That's why they're bringing bioregenesis techniques, DNA regenesis techniques. So you can be rescued from falling. We're not saved. The star seeds and indigos are not star, uh, saviors. <laughs> and you know, once again, not everyone can ascend because they don't have the DNA. It's not about being good. Or being sweet, it's nice, but it ain't getting you jack anywhere when you're worshiping, when you're judging, when you're sending fear and guilt and shame, and putting down women and all this. You know, you guys know this by now. You got it memorized probably. So, as a light worker, you're concerned. You're uh, you're invested in, and it's important for you to know how to have self-control of your consciousness. Uh, you know, it's a responsibility. Uh, that's why, you, you know, there's so many people not being responsible for their spiritual evolution. They're choosing with their free will to peddle astrology, uh, tarot, uh, the occult. They're into uh, worshiping angry gods. But, and, and remember what I said earlier about the blood sacrifice. They're into sacrifice. They're into drinking blood or the symbol of communion of drinking blood. They're into some dark, twisted shit. And they're not even aware of it. And they think that you're crazy talking about unity consciousness. They think that because we believe we're part of God, we say, I am God. Uh, they think we're local and that we're going to the lake of fire. You got it backwards. You're going to phantom. Okay? Because of your dark Viking, uh, pagan, Christian, uh, Hindu practices. Is there blessed techniques in those teachings? Of course. Um, at, at least you learn how to be psychic as a pagan, uh, as a Viking uh, Odin worshiper. At least you're learning some stuff, but you're still serving the chaos. Any type of chaos is bringing you down, not empowering you. Oh, maybe you're going to get light, uh, some destructive power over other people. You're, you're interested in treasure and gold, like the Vikings. They, they, just, they just want to go murder people and take the gold. They want to cut off people's heads. They want to kill women and children. Uh, the unholy wars, what do you think they did in the un... They call them holy wars. We call them unholy wars. What do you think they did in the holy wars? What do you think? What kind of person was Charlemagne? What kind of person was these different kings and queens? What kind of person are they? You find out what they actually do, what they have done to get their power in chaos. You have to do horrible, dark shit in chaos to get power over uh, being rich being in control, having real estate, having other powerful allies and friends. And, and that's, what, that's what you're being ruled by, these type of people. Vampires. Did I light my incense? No. I lit the charcoal, like usual, but not the incense. Unless it just burnt. And I didn't notice, I can't, you know, notice it. <laughs> this takes a few, couple of pieces here. I'm gonna put some, uh, blood, a uh, dragon's blood. Now, now I know I didn't do it. Cause now I, I know I would have smelled this and I didn't, I don't smell this. My amber. So I, I recommend you guys do research and have discernment when you're watching these shows because um, there's a lot of shows about witchcraft, about wi witches. Dude, I seriously watch these for research. I find the video clips and I'll save them for shorts, you know, video shorts later. A lot of people have watched these shows. You know, it's entertainment. 
Um, but you don't realize when you're spending all your time and playing video games of people killing each other, that's what you do in video games. You kill shit. I mean, of course, not all video games, but... Yeah, Helena, you guys can get uh, average consciousness boosted up. Um, I'll probably, on my next live, I'll probably get lit on Saturday. So, But right now, I just want to take a whole week off. And uh, because when it gets too bad in my body, in my lymphatic system, I have to keep using this wand to make it go down, which is not good. You know, why? Why not just stop smoking, right? So it's stuck in my chair, dude. What's up? What the shit? I can't hold this all the way up. But yeah, I would have to put it on this area mostly. Like when it was real bad, I didn't even know what the F was going on when I lived with my family. It w I grew a cyst on, under this nipple. So uh, that was even before I knew anything. I, I, that was like, what the F is this shit? And so this made it go away. But you still have stuff inside the body that's acting up, right? And not all of you brothers and sisters have issues with their lymphatic system. I do for some reason. If someone's an expert in that and and can find out what is the connection between cannabis and lymphatic system. Please let your brother Anuhazi know. Because I, I have to take herbs for that. And it helps. It literally helps. It's the only thing that helps besides um, this wand and not smoking. So. <laughs> well, um. It used to, it definitely helps you sleep and helps you with pain. But I found out through a couple of days of trying to not to just sleep naturally. Well, I don't need it to sleep, <laughs> which is a blessing because a lot of people have insomnia. A lot of people have problems sleeping and it drives them crazy. It messes with your freaking energies big time if you can't sleep, especially you have to. If you have to wake up to go to work or school at a certain hour and you, you can't sleep and it's five o'clock in the morning, you still can't sleep. What are you going to do? Right. <laughs> and I'll get people judging me and saying, oh, I like your shows better when you don't smoke. You know what's up? Because most of those comments, I just delete and block those people. So. It is an immature level of consciousness. And uh, now when you take mushroom, there's no smoking. But to me, mushroom is so powerful, so profound. I only do it once every three months, five months or six months. It is so powerful, so freaking supernatural, godlike, sacred, divine, what the F kind of shit, right? Not shit, but you know, divine, divine, hardcore, blessed beings and, and worlds. Like, here's cannabis, but here's mushroom. No comparison. And I don't have to, you don't have to smoke it, so. Anyways, uh, this is a journey. As a light worker, uh, you are in a, you would say, you're, you're serving light. So as a light worker, you're going to be attacked by darkness and you will have those experiences in your life because in the new age movement, it's clueless because they don't want to be thinking about the dark and they don't want to talk about the dark. They don't want to learn about the dark. I'm doing research in the dark by watching Vikings. For example, you learn what the dark side is. So you're not clueless. So you can learn how and First of all, you recognize darkness. You know how many people are confused about what is God? How many people are confused about what are angels? You know, God's a consciousness. Angels are extraterrestrials, multidimensionals. People are confused and distorted in it. When you got New Age worshiping uh, the Galactic Federation or Archangel Michael, uh, there's, there's distortion. And so as a light worker, you are trying to, uh, what do you call it? Transmute that. You're a guardian coming from the fourth, fifth, or sixth dimension into the third dimension, into the 3D drama, into the descending earth. You are an angel, archangel coming into the descending earth intentionally on purpose 
to help raise the, raise the consciousness so they don't fall. You know, those people who are learning systems like the Christos, they can reverse that fate, okay? Because you know how there's a yellow light and it's the point of no return. Well, people on earth are in a point of no return. They're falling, falling, falling. Well, you bring in teachings that will help them level out and then eventually raise. It's a rescue mission. Not as saviors. We teach others how to heal themselves. Okay? These teachings, like, for example, Kathara. There's a system in the in these teachings called Kathara 1, because there's a Kathara 2, 3, and 4. In Kathara, you'll learn how to bioregenerate your DNA. It's called biospiritual healing. Bio is reference to body, DNA, and spiritual. You do, phys you do body and spiritual healing. You bioregenerate what the distortions. Here on earth, there's distortions. Um, that have been introduced into the human DNA. Okay? So, and so now you're becoming this creature. Not the original human. A distorted human. It didn't happen yesterday. It's happening over time. It's a spiritual war. And that's, what, that's one of the tools they use. Man, the more awakened you become, you start to realize... There is a hell of a lot of darkness in our lives, in our food, in our uh, entertainment, in our spiritual religions and, and spiritual beliefs. It, it, it is in the family unit. It is in the scholastic system. It's in the medical system. Man, this is hardcore dark beings bringing in chaos. And it's becoming who we are. It's becoming what we think and what we speak. Their, their techniques are working, you guys, for most people, most humans. Now there's people pointing finger at you, light worker. Now, now you look like you're the crazy person. Right? They demonize you, even your own family. You're doing what? You're that's loose. You're practicing, you know, you're playing with demons and fallen angels. <laughs> when you're having this awakenment and this memory being returned, they think it's bad and against God when they don't even understand what is God. Bless your holy ones. And your spiritual journey. You found your family. Okay? You can have biological family and you can have your soul spiritual family. What's up, homies? Maharak shield, little alien, you said a holy one. Thank you for bringing that up. It's called the Maharak shield. And what does Mahara, Maharak mean? Maharak is a Lyran Anuhazi word. An, an alien word. Maharak, Mahara. It means inner Christ, inner crystals. So you're bringing in the inner crystal shield. Also called seal. You want to seal in yourself from that which is out here. And you don't allow anything to come in here. That's the whole purpose of the seal of the shield. A shield is actually what's part of the planet and part of you. You have shields. You have chakras. You have hoover bodies. And you learn the Maharak seal. It's like a protection. A pillar that goes all the way to the Earth's shield. So you actually will see a circular a platform like a disc shaped and about you know certain thickness but it's round disc under your feet six inches below no 12 inches below your feet six inches below your feet is the 12th chakra but your Maharak seal shield what you're using for the Maharak seal is to bring in 12 dimensional consciousness and protecting yourself with 12th dimensional consciousness. Remember, darkness starts at 11th dimensional. Well, you're, you're trumping that. You're going over that. You're, you're connecting yourself to your Christ self, to your divine blueprint, by bringing in and learning about the Maharak's shield. So, 
Um, there's there's a Lisa Renee video. She has a Mark Shield, but I advise you guys first to learn it through the teachings. It's actually in Voyagers too, at the back of the book, near the back of the book is. But there's also workshops like Cathara that teach you the full series of steps and deep explanation of all the steps and how to do it correctly. So thank you, little alien, for for that. Yeah, grid grid work when you usually is a group thing. When you talk about grid work, that's where a, a few guardians and indigo children are coming together to do planetary healing on specific sites. You're actually going to go to a site to do healing. You don't just sit in your living room. That's not grid work. <laughs> grid work is you go out into the grid and do healing. Ashana Dean, our sister Iasha Ashana. That's right. You said it, brother. Armor up, says First Eye. You said it, Holy One. Wow, you guys are freaking, uh, are so informative now. I mean, not now. I just mean to see so many of you talking about the techniques and talking about the work. It's freaking awesome. Because <laughs> that's what, oh my gosh, 111. It just said 111 concurrent viewers and 11, dude, 11 chat rate. I just saw five ones, you guys. <laughs> and I know people who aren't like intuitive light workers or empaths, they think we're crazy. Oh, you guys are loony. And you need to be in a, you know, self medicating, or you, well, we do, but you know, <laughs> you need to be in a, in a straitjacket or something. You know, they'll be really rude and offensive. Excuse me. And uh, hey, that's where their consciousness is. That's their vibration. <laughs> Look, I, well, the the guardians are teaching us. I'm I'm one of the guardians. Some of you guys are the we're all the guardians. I mean, you resonate with this information. I've heard Ashana say your, herself on several, even from the beginning. She says, if you're resonating to the to these teachings, more than likely you are an indigo. Okay? And that's something you start to realize within yourself that, hey, there's a reason why I've been brought here. There's a reason why um, I resonate in to these to this information, is because you it's inside you. You're coming from the level. Remember, indigo level indigos have up to you know 24 strands of DNA minimum. That's the lowest level of indigo. Jeshua, Jesus, was at 48 strand. That's double that. It's called the Emerald Sun DNA versus the Double Diamond Sun DNA. And so this is uh, the potential of light workers. Okay? Because dark workers, uh, fallen angels, demons, they have a cap. Okay? They have a cap of 11. Remember, that's not visible by three. What is 11? What is 10? What is 8? What is 7? What is 5? What is 4? What is 2? What is 1? So realize 3, 6, 9. What's up, Tesla? What about 3, 6, 9, 12? Okay, so this is a base 12 system. The divine, the divine is base 12, but the corrupted is base 4 or less. You know, base 4 is what's in our DNA. The distorted DNA only has four. Okay. Uh, well, it wasn't always that. Once upon a time, uh, everything had a variable base, base 12. And so a frog would have one set of DNA. Uh, a human would have another level of DNA. But no, everything here has four. Uh, what the F? Because the planet herself has been, her fields, her shields have been affected, distorted, attacked. These beings use technology as well. They use the Nibiru, planet Nibiru. They use something called the Battlestar Nibiru, which is like the Star Wars Death Star. But they call it the Battlestar. Hmm, Death Star, Battlestar. Hmm. Okay. 
And what did Darth Vader do? He blew up a planet with a Death Star in front of Princess Leia, who serves light. Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, were Skywalker Jedi, not Sith Lords, who destroy planets. Okay? Uh, that's another reason why I watch movies. I pick and choose movies that are light versus dark. I mean, it's a classic, right? But still, you learn something from that. You learn to recognize it. You point out, man, that person's a, a, a fear, guilt, shame, you know, all this BS. And, and that's another thing. When I'm watching the Viking series, they put down women. There's, they rape women and they don't get in trouble. And, they, and also, the Vikings, they have sex with more than one person. They have orgies. And but they will. There's many scenes in the in the series where, hey brother, come and have sex with me and my wife. And when they kidnapped uh, one of the priests, the Christian priests, and they took him to Scandinavia, they even asked him to come and sleep with his wife. <laughs> but women are definitely not equal there. The men are definitely they have the right to abuse the woman to beat her up. Okay, they, the man is telling you what to do, and you can't say jack shit. And those, in those, you know, beliefs in, in nations and laws, if you want to call them law. I mean, most of those people couldn't even read and write. Literally, they didn't know how. To, they just know the runes, the runes and the magic. And but to actually read a book, huh? What is that? So, yeah. This is a journey and a lot of us identify ourselves as a light worker. It means that you are connecting to order, the path of order versus the path of chaos. Because the path of order brings you the destiny of sorrow versus the destiny. I mean, I, I made a mistake. The dark side brings you de destiny of sorrow. The light brings you destiny of joy. Which one would you rather experience? Sorrow? Or joy wow that's a total different experience and what is, what are the what are these the Vikings talk about Valhalla I want to die a horrible honorable death in war uh, while I'm killing and murdering I'm gonna go to Valhalla <laughs> it's all about death big flag Blood and sacrifice and death, big flags. Christianity still death, blood, sacrifice, death, same thing. Uh, have your eyes wide open yet? Or are they still shut? Open? Are you still sleeping in the Sleepers Anonymous? Are you still a member of the Sleepers Anonymous? Are you still in denial? Are you still... You know, it's like, this is like an important time to wake up, you guys. This is the greatest time to be alive. One of the greatest times to be alive is right now during the spiritual awakening that's happening. Now, many people are, will feel ascension symptoms. Even 3D people will feel ascension symptoms because they're going through changes like the rest of us. Are going through changes but they're not spiritual changes for them they're not awakening but they're going to be experiencing the descending symptoms problems bad shit as a matter of fact a lot of people are supposed to die or they they're gonna die um in wars cataclysm something ma something messed up right something bad um, because that it's kind of like a, not, not, a something that, you know, how we have contracts or you would say a commission to be here. Well, they, they, they're not sitting on a commission, but they're, they're just in the, uh, you would say many of their lifetimes, they've come to this fallen state. So instead of progressing, they're degressing. And it's not our job to, 
to force someone to believe in unity. You can't, you know, unity doesn't do that. We're not evangelists. We're not trying to uh, convert you. You know, that was also in the Viking. All these priests, they're shocked. They're, they're shocked because the Vikings come in with their weapons and start murdering the priests in the robes. And it doesn't matter if it's a woman or a man or a kid. They just go in and start chopping people and, and cutting them down. And they're, they're in shock. Their God, Jehovah, is not protecting them. That's a theme in the show. Why, why, Lord, why are you not, why are you not speaking to me, Lord? Jehovah, Father God, why aren't you protecting us? Is it your will to, for the Christians to be slaughtered by these heathens, these pagans? <laughs> uh, wake up call. A reality, uh, your God is not working, huh? Your God is, why are, why are you being slaughtered and murdered? And, and, you know, they took this one priest, tore all his clothes off, and they, and they tied him to a, a something, like a post or something, and they started shooting arrows, like in his leg, uh, in his arm, on purpose, not to kill him, make him torture. And he's crying. Crying for his Lord to protect him. Lord God, Jehovah, protect me against these who... And then, and then finally someone just comes and splits his throat. As they're laughing at him, and, and, and um, you know, where's your God? Why, aren't, why isn't your God protecting you? No, seriously, there's scenes where they're saying, your God will protect you from these arrows. Nope. Dying, death, no protection. <laughs> you see or maybe you don't see but you can you're not damned if maybe you were following this path well hey I came out of that path I healed myself from that path while my family is still stuck in it still believing in judging me judgment in anyone right if there's a war do you think your Lord God Jehovah is going to protect you? Right? Do you think Allah is going to protect you? Do you think you're going to be saved from being raped or tortured? Okay? So there's so many convoluted, twisted, confused ideas in there. And so in the inner Christ, in the inner God, in the unity, we realize it through energy, through consciousness, through spirit, that you're part of this, not hierarchy of God, you're part of this higher consciousness of yourself. And you realize that you have a soul higher consciousness, you have a greater over soul consciousness, you have a greater over, eventually you get to this, which is God, the full encompassing God. And you have full memory of it. And you see all this twisted stuff uh, as, you know, path of chaos. It chose with this free will to be here. All these uh, religious people chose to be in, in this uh, dark concepts. They don't learn how to heal themselves. They think it's impossible. You know, I watched the Viking series and when people get hurt, they're so concerned about finding a healer finding you know some type of a priest to heal them but you know they, they they regularly talk to this guy he's always wearing dark his face is mutilated and he's the priest that you come and get advice from okay like tarot you're, you're divining advice you're divining and seeking knowledge somewhere from someone else, from somewhere else, except for the inside. As a light worker, you look inside. You're not looking for a pagan god, a monotheistic god. You're not looking for any god. You're not looking for any worship or subservience. Um, you're looking for your own connection inside. Do you think it was back in those Viking days? Or or the Greek days or the Roman days, they were teaching you all about gods. 
You lived in Rome? You were following uh, Apollo or Zeus. They didn't know anything better. They were in a region where the Illuminati forces were controlling religion, who are themselves controlled by the pup, their puppets being controlled by the Luciferian fallen angelic races, extraterrestrial races. So one religion says they're, they have the one true God. Well, they say that they're the one true God. You will see in the Viking series them banting back and forth, back and forth. You must believe in the one true God. Uh, our gods are the one true gods. No, only Jehovah is the one true God. No, Odin is the one true God. They all think they have the one true God. When neither one of them are connecting to unity. To them, unity is weak. All coming together in love? No, they're going to come at you with a sword or an axe or a gun. <laughs> because you're being gentle and loving and sweet, you're weak to them. Uh, you guys, that's why we're, we don't become sheep. You know, in Voyager's books, they talk about the Hundred Years War, or Thousand Years War. They talk about the Electric War. They talk about guardians fighting. Do you think you're supposed to sit and be a lamb and sacrificed and pushed around, smacked around, stabbed, sacrificed? Do you think you do nothing and just be meek and humble? Guardians guard. They fight. They protect. I'm not saying go start a revolution. We do this through consciousness as well. But if you're being invaded, if your th life is being threatened, if your children's lives are being threatened, there's anyone you love, and you, you think you're supposed to just be trusting in, in some uh, God, external God, to protect you. You see the irresponsibility of that. You have to be responsible and uh, have discernment and uh, find God within, find unity within, and know that you're in a dark planet. That's a falling, it's called a descending planet. Look it up in, in Voyagers. It's, it's called a descending planet. This is not an ascension planet. You know we're surrounded by darkness. Uh, maybe sometimes in your life you're going to be in a position to have to guard and protect. What are the rules of engagement? Right? Well, it certainly ain't being meek and let someone railroad you, murder you, or whatever, abuse you, treat you like, you know, an animal, treating you like a slave. No, no, no. You're in an abusive relationship, divorce, uh, leave, break up. You're surrounded by a narcissist or even a psychopath, leave, break up, place boundaries, place restraining orders, whatever you have to do, uh, go away from that. Don't long, thank you for those hearts, holy one. No longer allow that into your life. No longer allow, don't be a sheep, don't be meek, don't, don't what are you doing? Uh, listen, I'm, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm, I'm saying, hey, stop allowing this abuse. Because religion will teach you to be meek and humble and, and be abused by the, by the uh, angry, pissed off God or the angry, pissed off king or, or the Illuminati or some um, CEO or some boss or whatever. Uh, no, you don't be a sacrifice sacrificial sacrificial lamb you're not supposed to be a martyr but it's good it's honorable no it's not see how people in those systems are are into this
Know how to protect yourself. Physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. This is a spiritual war. You're going to be attacked on all fronts, baby. Do not be a victim of the victimizer game. Get out of that game. I am, I, I am playing this role. I must be, you know. No, you must not be. <laughs> Was it 144 again? <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. So, I don't mean to drag this out, you guys, but I just watched this, you know, I, I'm really getting into the Viking show because it's teaching you, it's showing you so much. That's just one example of many. You go to Amazon or you go to Netflix. Uh, you go to these uh, HBO or whatever. They're going to, even Disney, man. They're all about darkness and, and you're going to see all the shows they're promoting are, are 944 again. <laughs> They're all about, like, like, dude, seriously, I will open this window. And I, I, I swear that there literally shows about demons and shit. And witches and magic, dark magic, of course. Sorry, there's noise outside. Okay. Oh, there's one called the, wait, let me turn off my sound. <laughs> the first show, it's about the Messiah. Why is there sound? Uh, hey, I like the Stranger Things, but what is Stranger Things about? A bunch of demons and, and nether worlds, shadow worlds, and creatures and things. You know, when you have discernment, you won't be affected by these shows. Uh, you know exactly when you see it, right? Uh, the Sandman. It's, it's being promoted as one of the top shows. I'm trying to look at the info. Wait. After years of imprisonment, Morpheus, the king of dreams, embarks on a journey across to find what was stolen from him. Oh, they say it's so sweet and stuff. But this is literally about demons and, and fallen angels. And that those are the and it's about magic and, and casting black magic circles to 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 capture a demon and to use its power. And people are watching it. It's in the dramas section. These kind of shows are in the fantasy section. And it's one example out of all a lot of movies like this. People who don't have a sermon. Oh, they're pushing Noah on you with Russell Crowe. The Seven Kings Must Die. It's about death, obviously. Uh, the Last Kingdom. It's another Viking show. I, I watched the whole series with Uhtred, uh, son of Uhtred. Um, supernatural. Dude, this has like 15 seasons. Well, what is the supernatural? It's about death. It's scary. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, all this dark shit. Is, you notice there's a, well, maybe because of I've been watching Viking shows, I'm getting a lot of stuff like Barbarians. Um, but there's a show, that, a popular show called Lucifer. <laughs> what the hell, man? Uh, there's, uh, you know, this is just an example. I'm just trying to give you guys an idea. We're being surrounded by it. You're surrounded by uh, this takeover of malevolent ETs. Wanting to get you entangled in, you're getting entangled in these beliefs and ideas and frequencies. You're, this is all frequency. Okay? And, and when your thoughts go to that frequency, you're, you're simply now becoming that frequency. You get caught up in that same frequency. Now you're judging. Now you're about fear. Now you're, you, you know, you, now it's your... That's how you speak now. That's how you think now. And it's conditioning. Not just movies. It's in video games. You're being conditioned. You're getting conditioned in many different ways. It's mind control. And there's so many people think, oh, I'm not being, I'm in control of my mind. 
Are you really? You're not, you don't think you're being influenced. I'm in control. Uh, you're being influenced hardcore. Not, not, and also being poisoned by food, air, water, and all this other stuff. Medication. And you're in a hospital. I haven't seen my neighbor for a week now. She's stuck in some hospital now. Now they're, That's the path of no return. Uh, now they're bringing you hospice. Now they're taking all the money out of your insurance. They're depleting you until there's nothing left. Uh, you look at the Georgia Guidestones. They want to reduce the population. Uh, what do you think they're doing with war? Reducing population and, and feeding energy. Death and sacrifice and war is feeding energy. Why do you think they want war? Uh, when in the Vikings they're murdering people, what is that? Who's that feeding? They they go to these. You know how people go on spiritual journeys and and they'll walk uh, to many miles to some sacred site. Well, the Vikings did the same thing, except it wasn't holy; it's unholy. Where the, where you do sacrifice, so you get protection from the gods. So you do something horrible like murder someone, or. Or, you know, cut the throat and collect the blood of an animal, a goat, a sheep. Whatever you, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, you're trying to get protection and favor from these supernatural entities. And so, as a light worker, hell man, you're into light. You're not into a cult. You're not into finding uh, ideas and wisdom outside. You're a light worker? Well, shine your light, holy one. Look within for God. Not imposter God saying, I am your God. You must follow me. You are not ashamed to say, I am God. I am what one with God. I am one. Uh, you know the difference between religion Christian and uh, Christos consciousness. You have discernment. What are God's doing? What these gods are not gods. You have discernment. Or you don't. You're thinking I'm crazy and I'm making this up. I'm not. It's called the Emerald Order Teachings. We show you the Voyager's books. I've shown you in the last few lives. Literally, you can see the Voyager's books. Talking about these fallen angels. Talking about the Necromaton beetle people. Talking about the Anunnaki. Jehovian Anunnaki. Talking about the Marduk and the Enlil and the Inki Anunnaki. Talking about the, what really is the Galactic Federation. Have discernment. See what those entities and organizations are serving. See what's happening in the media. In the politics. See what's happening in the World War III building up. See, see it. And you're going to see these uh, infighting between religions. And your God, my God, these gods, pagan gods. Oh, you're going to see people fighting amongst each other. People will kill each other over their gods. They will kill each other for their gods and think it's a divine act. We have some people think suicide bombs are for their god. It's so convoluted. You see, light worker, what you're up against. And if you're one of those sissy, uh, what do you call, clueless light workers who not about nothing dark, nothing negative. <laughs> Why do you think you're here, light worker? To be neutral and do nothing? They call them guardians for a reason. Because there is a malevolence here. There is hatred here. There is racism here. There is war here. There is sacrifice here. Once again, I ask you, guardian, light worker, why do you think you're here? Okay? We're meant to help transmute. We're help to heal. We're help we're here to help enlighten. We're help we're here to help teach others to heal themselves. We're here to bring blessedness. We're here to bring unity. We're here to bring goodness, friendly, kind energies. We're here to be blessed. We're here to bring bliss. 
We're here to bring joy. You're standing in your light and not the false light. Because there's certainly false Christs, false gods, false light workers. Sending you paganism, monotheism, it doesn't matter. They're, sending, they're bringing you gods. They're bringing you uh, your enslavement. They're bringing you the shadow. They're bringing you the phantom. And, and a lot of these people don't even know it. They're doing it unconsciously. They're not doing it on purpose. They're just love, light, and clueless. They ignore the dark. So the dark does not get healed because they're too busy not thinking about it, not learning about it. They're clueless. Don't be a light worker who's clueless, holy ones. Stand in your light. Stand in your unity. Stand in your Christos, your inner Christ. Stand in God, the spirit of the true God, not the fake God, because there is fake gods. I am not high. I'm not on drugs. Hello, what's up? What's your excuse? What is your thoughts? What are you what are you doing in this world? Are you really shining light? Or are you one of those spiritual people who are just speaking lip service to Christ consciousness? Because the real spiritual people are gonna call you out, homie. We're calling you out lovingly, saying, hey, uh, what's up? What, look what you're really doing in the new age. Look what really is Michael, Archangel Michael, Michael. We're bringing you the truth about Enoch, about Toth. We're bringing you the truth about these false religions. What's up? What is your discernment? Well, in this group, in this group, we have 76% say they're real light workers. Okay, 76% of you, and so the others, well, let me see how many people say, I don't know yet. Oh, 20%. So only 4% say, no, I'm not a light worker. And that's okay. That's most likely 4% of the religious people in the house right now. And we love you. Uh, we're not trying to attack you. We're simply demonstrating, showing you, look. Look, Vatos, look, what's, look what the real truth is about that religion, about that light. Look at the real truth and, and check. <laughs> Sorry, guys, it's been strong. You said it, first eye, first one. I don't know how you pronounce the emoji, just first. <laughs> Helena in it. What's up, sister? Sorry guys, it gets intense. It can get intense, but it's passionate. It's passion. It's, uh, so don't confuse anger with intensity. I'm not angry. I'm coming from a space of love. I love all of you. I love all the believers. I, I have believers, or, I mean, Christians in my family. I love them. I have had many conversations with my mother. Uh, my stepfather has, doesn't care about any of this information, but my mother is open to it. Um, and, they're actually very sweet Christians. They put up with me and didn't judge me at all. They didn't say one bad thing about my beliefs. Um, but my mom did sit down with me one day and talked about some of my spirit guides. <laughs> with her Bible, by the way. Uh, but that was okay. I res she respects me. I respect her. And she's open to... She even said she loved Ashana when she saw one of her videos on my channel. I didn't, you know, I let her, because my mother, a hardcore Christian, she told me one day, she had this, she called it a dream, or she had this huge awakening. Like, she saw the entire universe, and she was seeing this huge energy, and when she was describing it to me, man, I know exactly what she was experiencing. But now she just kind of like, that just kind of went away. And now she's back in her Bible. And uh, what's up? You know, I'm sure a lot of you have stories like that, right? And so, and by the way, once up, until I was 18 years old, 
I was into that until I was freed. And I, I can say the same thing about my sister. My brother stayed in Christianity. My, my sister did the same thing I did. She broke out. And uh, because remember, I told you I was not only just in the church, we were also forced to go to a Christian private school all the way from kindergarten. No, it wasn't kindergarten. It was more like fifth grade for me. My sister and brother were younger. So I was from fifth grade to eighth grade inside this Christian grade school where they were beating us. And when we were, that's how they disciplined us by physically beating us with this wooden paddle that they told us to bend over and grab both our ankles and they would wail on us, man. And they give you little demerit systems. And when you got too many demerits, you were, you were told to go see the principal and a principal would freaking take it out on you. And if you said uh, something they didn't like, they would take you, drag you to the bathroom and you could see them pissed off and angry and they would just put the soap in your mouth. <laughs> and in this Viking show, okay, I'm sure they wouldn't, obviously they wouldn't do it in nowadays, but this is part of the Christian church. This is your history, buddy. There was a priest who was kidnapped by the Vikings. He eventually became a pagan. Now, when he w went back to the England, the Christians took him and they crucified him, man. Loving religious people, horrible death. So that's enough about that. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, uh, well, the fake Jesus wasn't the only one who was crucified, by the way. If you didn't know it, that was, an, that, was a, that was a type of death they used in the Roman days. And what was the medieval days and dark ages? They thought of so many unique ways of how to torture somebody. You don't believe me? Do a search on medieval torture devices. They were very creative and they wanted to find different ways to do torture and agony and suffering. As a matter of fact, when he started getting into torture, they want to find ways of being able to torture you without you dying or passing out. So you can keep on feeling horrible pain. And this is in religion, you guys. This is the medieval. Let me refresh my window. It says reconnection made. For some reason, we disconnected for a few seconds. It's refreshing, you guys. Thank you for your patience. Wow, there was actually a... And you guys, I just want to say, if any of you like this work, if you've learned anything from this video or other videos, um, you guys, I survived by this, by, by your participation, by your help. So I, I thank you in advance for the, for the small gift of $5 or whatever you feel called. Thank you for supporting this work, who, who, whoever has already done so. Thank you so much, you guys. And that's how I sustain myself and do this full time. Otherwise, I couldn't do this full time. You would get one video a week if I had to go to some other job. This is my job. This is my mission, my life mission. So thank you so much for supporting uh, this work. You could also do a donation through my PayPal link, or you could also become a paid member. But that benefits you too, because you can now become part of the Discord chat server and chat with other Christos members. And you can also buy one of my artworks or crystals. Thank you so much, you guys, for that. And there's another way, buying memberships for other people. <laughs> Thank you, Hunter, again, Holy One. Much respect to you, brother. So much. And Nicole, that's your sponsor. Thank you to that, Holy One. Sunset Dreams. 11-11? Wow. Celine, sister! Yeah! Big hug, sister. And I know she has a few of my artworks already. She's always been helping with, with uh, PayPal donations. Uh, you guys, thank you so much. I can't do this without you. Thank you, sister. I love you, Celine. And um, all of you who are members, who, you know, if you guys didn't notice, all the ones with different, was it green lettering, right? <laughs> Jacob, aside from these Voyager books, is there any other way of discernment with this being the truth? 
Well, this is a, not just the Voyager's books. Uh, there's, there's actually, since 1998, there's workshops. Like, I, I don't even know what all the workshops are because a lot of them were taken down and, and hidden. And so you have to find the workshops. But other than what you're trying to say, maybe you're saying, well, how, how do we believe you're true? See, that, that, that is, that's what a lot of people do. Um, this is something like, how do I prove God to you? You, you have to find God within yourself. How do I prove this is it true? Um, well, what do you mean? I, I'm telling you exactly uh, what is uh, sh being promoted. Let me show you what's being promoted and you can find this within yourself. So you don't need this to under uh, Voyager's books. Okay, I think you're a human being and, and enough to know, a spiritual enough to know that this is dark. Okay? Fear is negative and dark. Guilt is something that, do you, do you think guilt is a positive thing? Uh, judgment is, is negative. Uh, having elitists and Illuminati and kings and queens, all these rulers over you is negative. Uh, having a patriarchal only men's club uh, saying that women are lesser well, I got to use my mouse or my keyboard. Okay, putting down women is negative, not a positive. Calling yourself, uh, calling humans as sinful and inferior, that's a negative thing, not a positive thing. Subservience is a negative thing. Sacrifice, uh, hello, no brainer, that's a negative thing. Uh, being materialistic, instead of spiritual is a negative thing. Uh, worshiping surrogate gods, not the real God, you don't worship anyways. That blind worship is a negative thing. Exploiting animals, murdering animals, thinking animals are less and plants. Any life that's not a human you think is less. Uh, hello, you don't need voyagers, okay? I'm answering your question, brother. You don't need voyagers uh, to know this, to know something's negative, or let me show you what is positive. I gotta close this to open the other one. Uh, can you in your own heart and your own mind recognize what is positive? Those were the negative property qualities. These are the, which is being served by religion. Here are the positive qualities. It's a no brainer for me. I mean, for newcomers, I guess maybe it's hard to think that judgment is not good. I, there's no way I can, or anyone else can tell you all we can do is demonstrate, and I'm just simply demonstrating here. Here's one simple way to demonstrate you. Well, here you go. Besides Voyagers and besides the lifetime of work by the Guardians from 1998 to now. Okay. Uh, there, most religions in the world are, are, are patriarchies. There's not many examples besides the Inner Crystals teachings that are not patriarchal. The reality is almost all religions are sexist patriarchies bringing you this dark Templar anti-Christic creeds, what the guardians call false creeds. So you brother have to have your own discernment and check for yourself. Let me turn this back off. You, you have to go within yourself like everybody does, okay? I, I, no disrespect, but nobody can hold your hand and bring you Christ consciousness for you or unity consciousness. We all have to do hard work because now, now it is hard to ascend. So does that, that's basically it. So if you are interested in more than the Voyagers, then you would just simply search under speaker one's name. Her name is Ashiana Dean. Search under that in YouTube. If you want to, search in Google for that name. Search for that name in Telegram. And you will find more teachings and you can check. And that's what I keep on saying. Have discernment. See if you resonate with this information. If you don't, that's what, you know, that's perfectly fine. That's where you're at.
you believe in fear, guilt, and shame. And that's your choice. And that's what it is. There's no dogma here. No dogma. We're not telling you you have to do this or to be have a relationship. This, this, or that, or that to have a relationship with God. No, you don't. You find God. And our teachings uh, remind you that God's within, not without. The Creator created everything. The Creator is everywhere. It even says in the Bible, God is omnipresent. That omni means all, presence. So presence is everywhere. Not just in believers. Not just in chosen ones like the Hebrews call themselves chosen race of God. Thank you for that positive energy of the Holy One. <laughs> so that's my advice, brother, is you got to find, find... That's what these teachings teach you. They teach you to look inside. You don't even have to use Voyager's books. You know, there's... There's, quite frankly, there are people who are finding unity on their own without voyagers. People can feel it. They know that in religion, there's something twisted there. When God's going around and killing firstborn, there is seriously something wrong with killing babies. Even J Joshua was commanded to kill men, women, children, babies. Didn't matter. Even animals because the animals are horrible. I don't know. They, they had to be wiped out. So, do you resonate with that? What is your consciousness at? What do you feel is negative or positive? The real God or the false God. You choose. Machiwa. RD. Thank you, Holy One. Much respect to you. Thank you for supporting this work. This, this is a fair exchange of energy. So um, I keep doing this for you. This, this is how I can. Otherwise, I couldn't. I would have to have two jobs. This one and another one. So thank you guys so much for supporting this work. And uh, it helps me also expand the work, by the way. It helps me accomplish more. And so um, a lot of you are studying this work. You don't have to wait on me. You can actually study this information yourself. Remember... Being a light worker means you are in a lifestyle. It's not just sometimes on Sundays or on certain holidays. This is a lifestyle. And you're trying to uh, reach spiritual ascension and you realize it's not easy to... You co okay, what is natural ascension? Is you live 12 lifetimes and you ascend. Because you collected strand, substrand 1, substrand 2, substrand 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You collected, you had to collect 12 substrands to create a strand of DNA that would allow you to ascend. And that would be the natural process. You go through 12 lifetimes and ascend. Voila. Nope, not anymore. Now your DNA is distorted. And twisted, literally mutated. We're not the same creatures. We're not the same humans as we once were. Now you have to learn what the Emerald Order are teaching. Regenerate your DNA. And also, by the way, learn what is dark and what is not dark. Machua. Like, like within yourself. Not from a priest. Not from me. Not from Ashiana. Not from the Voyagers. You learn from within yourself. You know, the teachings are called inner Christ. That means inner. Inner Christos. The teachings are about the inner God. So, that's part of my answer. Look within. And see if you resonate. If you don't, if you're not here yet at this resonance, you're at a different resonance. And maybe you'll work your way up to a, to a higher consciousness. Machiwa. Thank you, Helena. Bless you, sister. And I see you all the time here. A lot of you are regulars. So grateful for you regulars. Much respect to you who are on the journey. Much love to you guys. Little alien. What's up, little alien? <laughs> I am a wizard. I even refreshed and still having problems? 
Wait, are you talking about internet connection? But then you're calling yourself a wizard. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> um, let me check my connection. I'll go to speedtest.net. If you guys want to know your internet speed, go to speedtest.net and push go. And it will tell you. Yeah, I see I'm on my, my worst internet. I have two internet connections. And, and sometimes my best internet stops and my other one takes over. But it's still getting 30 megabytes. It's not my side. It's not my side, you guys. If you're having internet experience, it could be on your side. <laughs> Law of One, you said it. Sunset Dreams. And we'll be finishing up in about 10 minutes, you guys. Okay, just so that you know, it's about that time almost. So, 10 more minutes. Kenneth W, blessings to all. You're talking about someone's soul? Sorry, and sorry you guys if the live is bad. Uh, I mean the connection. 111. There's a 111. We had so many freaking 111s today, it's unbelievable. Oh, Galactic Guardians. Well, let's all send love and blessings to Galactic Guardians and husband. Bless you, Gar Galactic Guardians. Okay, this is a healing. And find that healing. And it's natural to release, you know, to release crying and the emotion to be released in, over someone you love. Just know that that uh, there there's no such thing as death. Please understand, there is no such thing as death. There is only um, the body and the consciousness indwelling the body. The body may fail, but the consciousness lives on. Okay, it's not about rapture and is uh, being saved and and seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. Tunnel. It's about you reincarnating. And being alive and never stops. Being alive never stops. Now, your people around you may see you die. Uh, but you didn't die. Because people identify with the body. But your husband is still alive. And will be continue on. Uh, we are eternal beings. And another thing about death is remember this is physical body. Uh, remember, this is a hologram. People are bec are living in a hologram. And when you die, you don't die. You're still alive. I mean, the body, the, you're not the body, you're not limited to the body, you are the soul that came to be in the body. So that is some comfort to know. It's still not easy, right? When you're so personal and close to someone you care about, um, just know that part of the healing is knowing that you're... Your relatives never die. Um, it's only it's changing a form. So n there's some religions who believe you can be damned and, and to some horrible place. It's nonsense. Utter nonsense. It is their beliefs. It is their awareness. Uh, you become aware of a greater creation. So bless you um, and your healing process and your comfort and sending love there's we can all send love to her and your family bless you holy one and your and uh just realize that this is a, a even though this happened to someone else you know it, just realize that this will have this is a mark of a change in your life and you will go through changes and it won't maybe be easy but it's death you know the body dying is never easy Losing people you love in your, in this hologram experience. Remember, this is a hologram. Nothing can die. Nothing ever dies. Recognize completely God is all. God can't die. We live in different bodies. We live in different time vectors. And so, now when you tell a religious person that, they won't get comfort from that. They don't believe in that. But you're here with the guardian teachings. You realize there is no such thing as death. 
And it's not like saying, oh, we're waiting for death or, or to lose our body and to go into another incarnation or to go into the core of earth and wait for our next incarnation. No, I, I, you know, we realize airy life is important because it's recovering, reclaiming our soul consciousness, our higher consciousness. Every step you, every life you make is another opportunity to go into a better, greater experience. You could call it heaven. It's not heaven like you see in the scripture, but it's a heaven, it's a, a greater body. And actually, you'll be immortal. You'll learn from these teachings in density two. That's where people go to when they ascend. If they ascend, if they leave this universe, they will go to the universe two, the next density matter, and continue on in a greater body and a greater consciousness, more intelligence, more extrasensory perceptions. So blessings to you and your family and your healing. And thank you for being here. Much respect to you. So, <laughs> and you know, some cultures have a party when someone dies. Have a party, not disrespectful, but as in, hey, celebrating this person's in another higher level or another opportunity to become alive again in a body, in a different body. So. Thank you guys for being here and for being here on this live. And I know not you guys, we're finishing up now. I just want to say that you don't have to agree with everything I say or anything that the teachings say. Okay? We never mean that. You're not meant to just automatically accept things. And quite frankly, some of these concepts, they take time to absorb. They take time to resonate with. And, and, and maybe there's something here you agree with and something you don't. And that is perfectly fine. Just know that. It's a process. And a lot of this stuff can be considered advanced spiritual information. And so, of course, someone who's new won't know all these concepts and terms that we're using that are such as, you know, Kundalini or Huva bodies or Mahark shield or, you know, those are new terms, new, new understandings. And so it's a progression, you guys. And have patience with yourself on this journey. Know that you can and will get through this. And always know that you're never alone. Let's say you have zero friends. You're not close with any of your family members. You are still not alone. You have a huge family of consciousness and always available to you as long as you, you know, all you, when you understand, all you have to do is learn how to connect to that. Know how to, to, uh, Perceive, communicate, and realize your higher parts. Bless all of you. Thank you for spending your life, your time with us. Thank you for being part of the Christos community. <laughs> A community of star seeds and indigo children. And, uh, and, and I, I, I wish you guys the best on your journey and understanding. It's a great time to be alive and to awaken. And the stargates are still open. Six of them are still open on Earth. That, that means dimensions one through six current is flowing. It's a great time to be able to expand and ascend. You have the chance. These teachings are the tools. Uh, so I, I, you know, this is part of the galactic, no, <laughs> Guardian Alliance, the uh, Emerald Order teachings, the Guardians. And we break it down. We have diagrams. We have uh, websites. We have uh, membership areas. We have links to free material. You guys, welcome. This is a blessing to all of us. It's a gift to from the guardians, from our future selves. And let's do. Let, let's let's ascend together. Let's awaken together. And that's what we're doing. Much grace to all of you. Much love. Unconditional. Omni love. Christmas love, baby. What's up? Yeah. I am Christ star. I am Christ star. I am Christ star. Um shaddai ure akumtun. Um shaddai ure akumtun. 
Um shadai ure akuntum. Here's a quick little lyrin on Uhazi. It's coming from the song of Lyra. Omeda i patuma. Omeda i patuma. Patuma e deita e kumna. Omeda i patuma. Treti la iderna. Treti la iderna. Derma e kenta e kumna. Omeda i patuma. I am God. I am sovereign. I am free. Say it with me, brothers and sisters. I am God. I am sovereign. I am free. I am God. I am sovereign. I am free. And so it is. Blessings to all of you. Have sweet dreams. Have lucid dreams. Good night, holy ones. See you on the next live. See you on the flip-flop. Check out my videos. What's up? If you need to contact me, reach me a direct message on Instagram, Facebook, email. Namaste, holy ones. Good night. Peace. Yeah, baby. What's up? <laughs>